It's been a month now since Intel's Core X range arrived, and I'm not really sure how to describe how Intel's latest and greatest platform has been received. Let's just keep it simple and say there have been mixed feelings, strong mixed feelings. Anyway, I'm sure you lot are up to speed, so I won't go over all the details again in this video. Instead, I'll get right to the point. Recently, I created a 30 game test comparing the Core i7-7800X, that's the new 6-core Skylake X part, against the tried and true Core i7-7700K quad-core. Quite shockingly, the 7700K blasted the 7800X by 13% margin overall, and it was often up to and beyond 20% faster. Worse still, the 7800X didn't show any strength either. There wasn't a single game where it beat the 7700K by anything more than the margin of error. Concluding that video, I put the massive deficit down to the restructured cache design of the Skylake X architecture, but I noted it could also be the new mesh design. Like AMD's Infinity Fabric, Intel's mesh is a more efficient means of connecting many cores together, and when compared to the ring bus method previously used, it does save a lot of die space. There are some possible drawbacks though to the mesh design and I'll discuss those a bit later in the video. The main focus of this video though will be overclocking the mesh. By default, the mesh runs at the uncore speed which is in the region of 1.8 to 2.4 gigahertz. A few viewers claimed that in order to extract the most performance out of the 700X, I needed to overclock the mesh. Some even claimed that pushing the mesh from 2.4 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz would see the 7800X deliver 7700K like gaming performance. Prior to the video, I had actually tried increasing the mesh to 2.8 gigahertz and noticed maybe a 1 to 2 FPS increase. Given that that's within the margin of error, it was really hard to say if the overclock uh, was helping at all. So here we are. The mesh ratio has been increased to 30 times, giving us a frequency of 3 gigahertz. And as you can see, not much to report here when testing with Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is the same 1 to 2 FPS I saw at 2.8 GHz in my previous test. Even with the CPU clocked at 4.7 GHz, we see little improvement in performance. Still, rather than call it a day and close the book on the mesh overclocking, I decided to quickly check out a few more games. The next obvious stop for me was Battlefield 1, and here we did see up to a 4% performance increase when comparing the average frame rate at the stock clock speeds. It's hardly redefined the 7800X, but it has helped close the gap between it and the 7700K in this title. Okay, so what about a game where the 7800X got completely creamed by the quad core? Such a game would be Civilization 6, and here we see the mesh does boost the minimum frame rate for the stock configuration by an impressive 10%. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Granted, even with the mesh overclock, the 700X is still 15% slower than the 7700K. Uh, it's an improvement nonetheless, though. That said, though, once the CPU cores are overclocked to 4.7 GHz, we see that the mesh overclock now makes little to no difference. The gains in Far Cry Primal, another game where the 700X gets completely trampled by the smaller chip, are pretty miserable. At best, the mesh overclock nets up to 5% more performance, though for the most part the gains were more around the 3% region. Grand Theft Auto V is another game where the 700X looked very weak in comparison to the 7700K, and here the mesh overclock does boost performance by 6% at the stock core clock speeds anyway. Once we overclock the cores and run them at 4.7 GHz, the mesh overclock now improves performance by just 2%, which again is within the margin of error. Wrapping things up, I gave Hitman a shot, and the DirectX 12 title delivers similar results to what we've seen already. The minimum frame rate, for example, is improved by a decent 7% margin at the stock core clock speeds, but only 3% once the cores are overclocked to 4.7 GHz. So, I think we can conclude that the mesh overclocking does help, maybe not just as much as some are making out. The gains seem to be much less impressive once you overclock the actual cores themselves, which was surprising. I honestly thought it'd be the other way around. Uh, that would make more sense to me anyway, but that wasn't what I found. I should note that with the mesh at 3 GHz, I did run into the odd game crash, and twice the system booted up and couldn't find the SSD. Increasing the mesh voltage helped stabilize the system a bit, but it didn't completely solve all the problems I was having with the 7800X. On occasion, there was still the odd hiccup. I would also like to just point out that I have tried the mesh overclock on the ASRock X299 Taichi, as well as the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Gaming 3. Both provided the same results. I've also purchased the ASUS Prime X299A, and that will be arriving later in the week, so I'll see how that board goes as well.
Before wrapping this video up, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Intel's mesh design and express a few of my own thoughts. Right, so for a long time now, Intel has been using the ring bus method, a low latency, high bandwidth solution. The ring bus was introduced with the Nehalem architecture, those impressive LGA 1366 CPUs released all the way back in 2008. And this, in my opinion, is when Intel really started to hit full stride. In those quad core parts, the ring bus made perfect sense and enabled a highly efficient design. However, as core counts for the server parts using the same basic architecture exceeded 12 cores, the ring bus method started to take up a lot of room, and the benefits seen with the lower core count parts no longer existed. The high core count models ended up with multiple rings, which ultimately led to a very complicated design. Aware of this issue when designing Zen, AMD came up with the CCX module design, which uses what they call Infinity Fabric to connect the multiple CCX modules, and this gave AMD a scalability advantage over Intel's ring bus architecture. Therefore, it was clear Intel required a similar method, and therefore they developed the mesh architecture. Intel claims that the mesh design sees a negligible latency difference when compared to the ring bus, and this might be true for the really high core count CPUs. However, for the 6-core, 8-core, and probably even the 10-core parts, based on what I've seen so far, the ring bus was a much more efficient design. Of course, there have been some other major changes to the Skylake X architecture, so it's really difficult to say for sure if this is just the mesh design that's responsible for the weaker-than-expected gaming performance. In any case, what we're now seeing is much similar performance between processors such as the Core i7-700X and the Ryzen 5 1600, which you will soon see in Friday's video, not to give away too much. And both of those processes just mentioned are, of course, six core parts. Having said all that, Intel still does have an IPC advantage, but it's nowhere near like what we saw when comparing the Core i7 7700K to, say, the Ryzen 5 1500X, for example, at the same clock speeds. Right now, I believe that while the mesh design might work well for high core count CPUs, those exceeding 12 cores or thereabouts, it doesn't really work that well for lower core count CPUs, and this is why we're seeing the 7700K with its ring bus design absolutely blasting the 7800X. Until games really require more than, say, 8 threads, the superior resources of the 7800X won't be able to offset the increased latency of the mesh design. Anyway, this is just a theory from a guy who spends way too much time running benchmarks and even more time exporting graphs from Excel. What I can tell you is that overclocking the mesh will help, just probably not as much as you'd like. And, well, that's where I'm going to leave this one, at least for now anyway. Coming up on the channel uh, very soon, as in the next few days, I'll have a big 30-game benchmark comparison between the 7800X, 7700K, and the Ryzen 5 1600. And without even trying to hype that one, I can tell you the results are extremely interesting. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.